is one of the world's best bass players and a founding member of Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tones. Tonight, Victor Wooten will be at the Lyric Theater in Lexington for Woodsong's Old Time Radio Hour. The five-time Grammy Award winner will take the stage to share his talent and talk about his new book, The Spirit of Music. It's been a great journey uh, being able to, to develop a solo career because of the people that helped me do it, including Bela Fleck. That's how Bela Fleck and the Flecktones came about. Bela had been with a band called the New Grass Revival for many years. They were a bluegrass, bluegrass band that took bluegrass in a different direction, playing Beatles tunes and, and, and um, Bob Marley and Hendrix tunes and all this rock tunes with bluegrass instruments. So that band was called the New Grass Revival. They took bluegrass and made it new. Well, then Bela wanted to do his own music. And so that's where Bela Fleck and the Flecktones came about. So because Bela had done it, he, he knew how to do it, and he was very supportive of it. It didn't mean that the band had to break up for me to make my own records or for Howard or, or my brother Future Man or any of us to, to do our own thing. Bela was very, very supportive, and he became a mentor and uh, an elder to me to help me know how to do it in the proper way. So it's been a great, great journey. And then the fans supported me also. And I, I don't even have this career without you all. So I thank you. I'd play bass without you all anyway. But I don't have a career as a musician without you. So I'm indebted to all of you. Your fans will be able to see you in Lexington at Woodsong's Old Time Radio Hour. So what can people expect for your show? In addition to making music, you'll also be reading from your new book, The Spirit of Music. Yeah, I, I will read it. You know, I think people should expect to be a part of the show. And this all came about because I, I was up in that area not long ago uh, at an outdoor. It was actually my first show in a year and a half. My first show of the of you know during the pandemic, I played it by myself, just solo, and we had such a good time. We decided to take it to the Woodsong stage, but what I plan on doing is is what I did in this out, outdoor show is I include people into the show. I ask questions. I let them ask me questions, give them things to think about, not just songs to listen to. In other words, I want us all to leave that room better people because we challenged ourselves. We thought about things. You know, music is one of these, these things, if, if, if not the biggest thing in, in our lives that brings people together. And it brings different people together and makes us unity, makes us unify and forget about our differences for an hour or two. Because if you think about it in music, we realize that the band, the band is best when all the instruments are different. You know, we could have a band full of flutes and it'd sound good, but it's better if we mix up the instruments. So music allows us to recognize and celebrate our differences. And because of that, the audience does the same thing. So we're all there together, you know, and, and I don't care who you voted for, who you pray to, how much money you have, the color of your skin, music just brings us together. And I love that, right? So in pointing that out, in recognizing what music's doing and more than what music's doing, what we're agreeing to do. My thought is that if we can do it in this building for a couple of hours, we can continue once we leave. You'll be sharing with the audience your new book, The Spirit of Music. What inspired this book? This book, The Spirit of Music, is a sequel to my first book that's called The Music Lesson. And uh, it, The Music Lesson first came from from teaching music. When I started teaching in the early 90s, uh, ha having researched what other teachers were teaching, because I never taught anything, <laughs> Jennifer, I wasn't a teacher, but people were asking because my playing style was so different. Um, I decided to teach what most people weren't teaching. And what I was seeing is that everyone was teaching good things, but most of it, 90% of it could be categorized as notes, meaning we teach scales and chords and things like that and it all deals with 12 notes but when I bought my bass guitar the notes came with it you can buy the notes 
So why does every bass player or every musician who's using all the same notes, the same way when we speak, we're using the same words, how do we all sound different? It means there's something else beside the notes or besides the words we're using. There's tone, inflections, rest, articulation. And so I started teaching those things. And people hadn't, they weren't used to that. So they said, hey, you got to write a book. I said, no way. I don't want a Wooten method. I don't want to tell somebody what to do. I like pointing in directions, let you choose. But anyway, that book, uh, I ended up writing a book based on those lessons, but I put those lessons into a story. It really went well. People were enjoying it. But you can really only get so much in a book, and I knew I had more to say. And so many years later, the spirit of music came about to continue the story about, okay, now the first book gave you the courage to play music. Now, why do we play music? Right? And so we look at that and we look at the fact that music is kind of, well, I'll just take, tell it to you from the story standpoint. Music is dying. And what can we do to save her? So it's a continuation.